Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Blue Black Mill, an archetype that's feared and dreaded by many. The goal is to empty the opponent's library, so if they draw from an empty deck, they lose the game. And it recently got a very big upgrade, thanks to Historic Anthology introducing a Glimpse the Unthinkable, a two-mana sorcery, saying a target player mills 10 cards. And if you're planning to win around turn 5 in this deck, which is customary, the opponent might have like 48 cards left if you factor in opening hand and draw steps. So Glimpse mills over one-fifth of their library, so if you would turn this into, let's say, a burn spell in a mono red deck that just deals damage to life totals instead, this would deal more than 4 damage, so it's a very efficient rate for a mill spell. And then our other heavy hitter is Tasha's Hideous Laughter, especially in a format like Historic, where curves tend to be very low, lots of 1 and 2 mana spells, so Hideous Laughter routinely mills over 15 cards. Then we also have Maddening Cacophony, which mills 8 cards, can also be kicked but doesn't come up very often. Then another mill engine is Ruin Cramp. We often want to play this turn 2, so we don't expose it to removal unnecessarily, and pairs very nicely with our fetch lands, milling the opponent for 3 whenever our land enters the battlefield under our control. And we're playing the fetch lands that gain 1 life here instead of playing Fabled Passage, just because the extra life gain I think is more relevant than Fabled Passage sometimes coming into play untapped, but you can make an argument for both. And then a Drowned Secrets is also quite nice in a deck that's only playing blue spells, including Glimpse, which is blue-black. So this will mill the opponent for two whenever we cast a blue spell. Also pairs nicely with Merfolk Secret Keeper, which mills the opponent for four using Venture Deeper. And then we can still cast an 0-4 out of Exile to maybe block and soak up some damage and also trigger Drowned Secrets once again. We've got a little bit of interaction with Fading Hope to bounce an opposing creature and scry one, although even against control decks we can use it to maybe save our Ruin Cramp from removal, or pick up a Secret Keeper so we can once again use the Adventure to mill for four. And then we also have a bit of card selection with Consider, which can also mill our Drowned Secrets, helps us fill out the curve and find our more impactful mill cards like Hideous Laughter and Glimpse. And then we're not playing Lurus as companion in this deck because we want to make room for Ashiok Dream Render, which can prevent the opponent from searching, and more importantly, we'll mill them for four and exile their graveyard. So we take out any graveyard synergies, can be very useful against reanimator decks, of course. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, eight of these fetch lands, the blue black pathway, lots of basics to find, and then also have four copies of Ipno Rivulet, which we can activate to mill the opponent for four. If we're out of other mill spells, this can potentially finish off the opponent. So this is our approach of blue-black kind of turbo mill. You could build versions that play more rogues and rogue synergies to mill the opponent, then maybe play more controlling role. But our deck is just purely focused on milling, so this is going to be a bit weaker in a metagame filled with hyper-aggressive and combo decks, but it's going to be a bit better against control strategies, as we don't really rely on creatures too much to do the milling. So if the opponent has a bunch of removal in hand, then we can easily win the game. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is quite promising. Probably start with uh, Secret Keeper milling for four, and then next turn we can play the cramp before playing our land to keep going. Opponent on a green-white life gain company deck. Main decking Broken Wings. Ashok could also come in handy. Don't expect too much removal from the opponent, maybe a Skyclave Apparition at some point. So Rune Cramp's likely to stick around. And then we have a Fading Hope as key interaction. So we can keep that up alongside Consider. In case her opponent tries to go for some infinite combo with the uh, Scurry Oak alongside Heliod. Alright, it's gonna be a Moon Dancer. Could bounce Soul Warden so Moon Dancer doesn't start uh, growing here. Could also bounce Moon Dancer itself, but then uh, opponent still gets a value from Scry. Okay. Is it time for Ashiok? I think so. The sooner we play Ashiok, the sooner we can uh, kind of leverage our Planeswalker as it will Welcome. stick around for longer. So we can activate it multiple times. 
So now our opponent would need to play Soul Warden and another cheap creature to grow Moon Dancer to threaten Ashiok, otherwise we can just block. Now because our opponent's playing a company deck, their average mana values are relatively high, so Hideous Laughter might not be the most effective, as our opponent's packing a lot of 3-drops. But uh, yeah, opponent's stuck on 2 lands, and we get to untap, even found a fetch land, so all going according to plan. Opponent's nowhere near assembling the combo. And we're doing a good job milling them. So Ashok puts them to 30 cards. Another company gone as well. And let's see how much damage Hideous Laughter can do here. Opponent down to 8 cards. So Hideous Laughter milled for 21. So we probably just need to untap once more. And... We can likely finish off our opponent. Just hitting a land drop will do it. But we could draw into another mill effect with Consider. So best case scenario for them, they have a Skyclave, Exile, Rune Crab, Kill, Ashok, which is exactly what they have. Alright, so the game might not be over yet. I guess never mind, opponent just exiling Ashok. That's strange. And then attacking our face. And then now a fetch land will do it. Yeah, they probably wanted to sequence that a little differently. I guess their opponent's down to one card, so technically not dead yet. But even if they assemble the infinite combo with Heliod and Scurry Oak, they wouldn't necessarily kill us on the spot. Should have actually considered first, in case I did find another Rune Cram before playing my fetch land. But this will do it too. All right, awesome. Opponent gets to untap and explodes as soon as they draw from an empty library onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. What do we think of this one? It's maybe missing one of our mill engine cards, but we do have Ashiok eventually, and then Hideous Laughter, one of our better ones, so probably still a keep. And then we'll fetch turn one since we don't have a crab. And turn two, maybe play Secret Keeper, which can also help protect Ashiok. Opponent on a red aggro deck, which can be a tough matchup. Although there's a Rune Cramp, that'll help. Can get another Islands, since we have Pathway for Black if needed. So hopefully we dodge a hasty 2-drop. Burning Tree also scary. At least a mono red deck typically doesn't have many 3 damage burn spells to finish off Ruin Cramp. And now we can block Robber since Emissary picked up the plus 1 counter. Drowned Secrets is interesting. So, got a couple options. Could play Ashiok. Could get our Drowned Secrets going first and then keep up Fading Hope. Uh, or go Drowned Secrets, mill with the Secret Keeper, and then next turn, especially with a land, having Secret Keeper to block and protect Ashiok could be very useful. Or I can get Ashiok down right now, although it's probably gonna die right away once this transforms and the opponent attacks with everyone. So maybe I should try to uh, get the Drowned Secrets going and keep up a bit of interaction with Fading Hope. Especially if something like Annex shows up, I would be happy to bounce it, save myself a bit of uh, damage. Opponent attacks. So they might have a Stomp to finish off my Ruin Crab. I guess I can see if we can maybe bait it out before damage and then bounce the creature that we're blocking. Since I don't really want to bounce Emissary, which they can essentially replay for free. Robber has haste, so maybe doing this is better, although it's a close call. Alright, opponent lets damage happen, so be it. I think we bounce Robber, or we can just take it and then see if they have a 3-drop we want to bounce, like Annex. Although Stomp on Rune Crab would be unfortunate. I guess we could also bounce Rune Crab itself if they try and kill it. 
So I'll just let damage happen. Alright, let's try this. Also results in Bone Crusher not being uh, available as a creature. Secret Keeper's fine, although I think we prefer land at this point. Alright, so we can wait on the Rune Cramp since we don't have a land to go with it. I can mill with the Secret Keeper and play it so we can block with it. Even though it's not the most mana efficient play. And then hopefully if we pick up a land, I can go Ruin Cramp, play a land, and play Ashok afterwards. Opponent stuck on two, down to 30 cards in library. Down to 12 we go. And a card is added to the board. Another Drowned Secrets. Alright, in that case... I'll try this. Now an Amber Cleave could still come down as our opponent's got plenty of attackers now. So that's the primary concern. Opponent is down to 23. Tanks with all. And uh, let's soak up some damage here. There's a cleave, probably on etching to kill the crab. So we're at four, and yeah, it's probably time for hideous laughter. We've waited long enough. Mill them for four, and then we need to mill them for 19 with the hideous laughter. It's going to be a challenge, but we got there. Now our opponent could still cast a burn spell in their upkeep, but at four life, with two mana, it's unlikely that they have two copies of Play With Fire. So just a uh, stomp from Bone Crusher, and we got there. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Opponent on a red deck. And turn on Soulscar Mage. Well, at least we've got a few bounce spells here to buy time. Might want to bounce Soul Scar before they can enable like a light up the stage. Although they already played a land, which makes it less likely for them to have a light up, so I'll take the one, maybe bounce a two drop instead. Alright, Arcanist, we can send packing. And then probably want to dig for an extra land here. Okay. Can get our drown secrets going. Now we are kind of enabling the opponent's Arcanist by milling them, although Ashiok at least exiles and so does Hideous Laughter. So that mitigates that a little bit. Ancestral Anger we can also nerf with Ashiok. Alright, opponent just going for the throat here. Not gonna replay Arcanist. So now I'm happy getting Ashiok down while we might get to untap with it. Opponent's blue red, so maybe missing a color as well. See static discharge. Another ancestral anger, and they found their blue mana. And discharge going for the face. Does Soul Scar finish off Ashiok? It does. So now the next one will deal 4 damage. Okay, let's keep on milling. And we can keep up Fading Hope as well. Their average mana values are pretty low, so Hideous Laughter should be effective as her opponent goes down to 18 cards. There's Arcanists. Opponent does play Reckless Charge, so we can maybe bounce in response. And yeah, there it is. So a nice value play here, bouncing Arcanist before it gets haste. And probably don't need storefront. So opponent's got 15 cards left, this essentially mills them for 10. And then I can activate Rivulet, which mills for 4, 
So still not quite enough, but I think that's going to be our play here. So I should use one rivulet to pay the generic costs. And then, uh, yeah, hope that our opponent can't deal 8 damage next turn. Might have been better to gain the 1 life and then next turn go for Rivulet. Which could have made the difference. At least they don't have the mana to flash back a Reckless Charge on Arcanist, which otherwise could have replayed a Burn spell and probably killed us. But if they have another charge in hand, we could be in trouble. Opponents doing the math, figuring out if they have lethal somehow. Alright, charge the Soul Scar Mage, so we're dead to a Wizard's Lightning. And they have the Wizard's Lightning. Alright, at least gaining the one extra life with the storefront would not have made a difference. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a very promising start. Turn one, mill with a Secret Keeper. And then turn to Ruined Crab, mill for 6 using our fetch land. Can get our black mana sorted and double glimpse. So it doesn't get much better. Up against what looks like an Esper control deck. And uh, Drowned Secrets could be a fun addition to here. Typically we don't mind playing against control. Since they tend to have lots of creature interaction, which does not line up well against our game plan. Opponent's got some uh, graveyard value here with Jumpstart. Although Ashok will eventually exile their graveyard. So let's see if they can kill the crab. A weather to runestone. Don't think we care about that one. Alright, another fetch line's great, so get to play that. And then... Do we go for a glimpse or get a drowned secrets going first? Have to worry about potential hand disruption or counter spells. But I think long term it's probably still beneficial to get this Drowned Secrets going. Opponent passes with 3 mana, likely holding a counter spell. So we can mill with the crab once again. Double Archmage's Charm milled. So. Can maybe play the Secret Keeper, see if there's a response. But the card we really want to resolve here is Ashok, as that's likely to mill more than a Glimpse long term. Also, of course, exiles their graveyard, which is relevant. And yeah, there's a charm countering Glimpse. Still mills two with the Drowned Secrets. Okay, so can they get rid of the Crab? They can with the Supreme Verdict. But now they're tapped out, and Ashiok can go to town. Nightmare. Graveyard gets exiled. And 19 cards left, so... A glimpse almost gets us there. Our opponent might be holding a fistful of creature removal. Which is not going to be too effective here. So we'll try a glimpse. And then we could also potentially sacrifice our rivulet. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So we got the job done. Reaching Mythic, playing Blue Black Mill in Historic. Who would have thought? But yeah, there we go. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems acceptable. Bit of interaction with Fading Hope. And then Drowned Secrets, double Ashiok. Opponent Red White. And we can play our secrets here. So ideally they don't have too many early creatures to apply pressure with. And another Drowned Secrets, I think we still play Ashok here. And then next turn we can maybe double spell Drowned Secrets and another Mill spell. Alright, so our opponent's actually a graveyard deck. Double Stitcher Supplier, so it could be Reanimator, in which case Ashok is, of course, the best card we can hope for. So let's Drowned Secrets. Maybe a Parhelion deck. 
and then we can consider and I'll main phase it in case we find another one drop we want to play here. Might have wanted to just take the damage in case I drew into a crab, but that's okay. And then activate Ashok. And definitely looks like a Grease Fang Parhelion deck. And we've got the Fading Hope to potentially interact at instant speed to make sure they don't hit us with a vehicle. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And has potential. So we'll keep. Question is whether to fetch turn one. And I think we do. Since I want to play Drowned Secrets before starting to mill with Secret Keeper anyway. And then I'll have to decide whether I want to get my Swamp or another Island. Because if we're up against an aggressive deck, I could see the advantage of just getting an extra Island so we don't have to take damage of Rivulet as much. But if we draw a Glimpse, we might regret it. So it's a tough call. I think, in general, probably better to get to Black Mana. Opponent green white and life gain, it looks like. Found our crab, sadly. Got punished for fetching swamp here as well. But that's okay, we'll go drown secrets and then next turn play ruined crab, play a land, and then maybe cacophony afterwards. So this might be playing Heliots plus curry oak combo. And the moon dancer early can apply quite a bit of pressure. Alright, so we'll stick to the plan. And there we see company. This mills him for 10 total. And another veteran in the graveyard for them to escape at some point. They've got a Skyclave. Probably deals with the Rune Crab, is my guess, but given that we're out of lands, might not be too bad. Secret Keeper will eventually give us a Chum Blocker for Moon Dancer to soak up some damage. Another Swamp is a little awkward since we wouldn't be able to make use of it. Secret Keeper Mill and play it, or just Secret Keeper Mill and then Cacophony Mill, and then. I don't even know if there's a point in playing my Swamp, since if I draw Crab, I might want to keep it. So, yeah, tough call. 35 cards remaining. We're at 14, about to take probably at least 8. So, we only really have two more turns. So if that's the case, I should probably maximize my Mill, which means maybe just going for Hideous Laughter first. In case I draw, let's say, Glimpse next turn, I can Glimpse plus Cacophony. 17 cards left. So let's say we just play both of these next turn. This mills for 6, this for 10, 16. Yeah, that would be enough. If our opponent can't kill us here. Or get rid of our Drown Secrets. Scurry Oak, alright. So they're set up if they have a Heliot to combo off. Put all the counters on Scurry Oak, make infinite squirrels. So yeah, this should be a game here. Mill for six. And mill for ten. Also had a rivulet as a potential way to mill, but wasn't going to have time to activate it here. So exactly zero cards remaining. And our opponent can cast something in their upkeep, but they're not a burn deck that's going to deal three damage to us. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Got our mill engine, and then two heavy hitters, and a bit of interaction. We'll grab a... Probably an island first, and then we'll get a swamp next in case we draw a rune crab. But I still want to get a tap land out of the way. Bishop of Wings, so Angel Life Gain. And 
and we'll get our drowned secrets down. Hoping it does not get removed by a Skyclave apparition. Might have been better to still play the island in case I end up going Fading Hope plus Consider next turn. And playing the storefront. Hideous Laughter is great. Okay, so do we want to keep up Fading Hope? Seems worth it since I can always consider as well. So we'll Cacophony and then pass with one mana up. Forty-two cards left still. So a long way to go. Another bishop. Okay. So they're setting up for a Resplendent Angel, which might be a good target for Fading Hope. But for now, we'll take the damage. Do they've got a Valkyrie as well? They do. Yeah, I think we let that happen. Resplendent Angel milled, and a Glimpse on top we'll probably want to keep. Okay, so is it time for Hideous Laughter? Plus Torfronts, or do we feel like we need to keep up Fading Hope in case they were sandbagging a Resplendent Angel? We already milled two of them, so they're not super likely to have another in hand, but not impossible. Also might want to bounce a Valkyrie, which would pump the team. So if possible, we want to keep up Fading Hope again. So I guess that means we just Cacophony. And keep up Fading Hope and get our Swamp. And then next turn we can either double or triple spell. And yeah, there's a Resplendent Angel. So that's going to resolve and then we want to bounce it before it makes an Angel token end of turn. And a storefront is a one life relevant, maybe. We're taking seven. Not necessarily. An untap land might just be better. Alright, so. Can glimpse plus hideous laughter now. And that might get the job done. Never mind, we got kind of unlucky there, hitting double collected company. And an Amirios call as well, opponent cast company right now. They're down to four cards, but they're not gonna have lethal here. And Secret Keeper should be able to cross the finish line, also have a rivulet. But yeah, if they hit a Righteous Valkyrie, we could have been dead. So, close game. That Amirias call definitely almost uh, won them the game. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is quite promising. Turn one, mill with Secret Keeper. I'm unlikely to play this on black, so I think I'll save myself the life here. And then turn two, go Rune Cramp Rivulets. Although I might want to hang on to consider until after we play Drowned Secrets. Put on the green white, and some sort of enchantment deck with a Kami putting in Stomping Ground. Ooh, nice fetch land. Makes our cramp even better. And then now it's probably okay to get a swamp. I guess it could be some sort of spirit synergy deck. No, Targnar. I guess just Naya, maybe go wide. Make a bunch of tokens. And a Devilish Valley. Okay, that makes sense. Although we can soak up some damage here. 
Glimpse is not bad, but we'll get our Drowned Secrets engine going first. And then we can hang on to Fading Hope and Consider to maybe bounce the valley if it becomes a problem. Alternatively, I could play Secret Keeper, which may just be good enough here. Doesn't seem like our opponent's gonna deal infinite damage with the valley. And this can also soak up some damage. And then next turn we'll glimpse and keep up our instance. Opponents down to 35 cards already. Alright, rope line attendance. Enters the battlefield. Creature cards in your hand perpetually gain. When this creature enters, create a 1 1 green and white citizen creature token. So a burning tree makes an extra token. Valley up to 8 power. Uh oh. And another burning tree. Well, I guess I should have uh, kept up Fading Hope. <laughs> a lesson learned. Did not know this was a card that existed. And I don't think we milled one either to have a look at it first. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Turn one, probably fetching with Theater. Thought C is gonna have a look, probably taking Secrets or Ashiok. Takes Drowned Secrets. Alright, now I can probably save my fetch lands to go with a Crab if we draw one. And just mill with a Secret Keeper. Might want to save this for Black. Is your opponent on... A blue-black merfolk deck. For now we can Cacophony. And um, might want to play this on black already. Although I could see the advantage of having more blue if next turn we want to like Secret Keeper plus Consider. Okay, I guess it's more blue-black control. And not really merfolk. But they've got a Merfolk God. We picked up our Drowned Secrets. Now, the earlier we play Ashok, the better. We might still get two activations out of it. Although we could also protect Ashok. Opponent draws, which kind of plays into our mill game plan. Alright, I think it's time for Ashok, although let's see what counter spells our opponent's packing. We haven't milled any. So, not sure if they're running any, but I think we still tap out for Ashok here. That resolves. And then now the question is, do we hang on to theater in case we draw a cramp or play it out? Opponent's down to 29 cards. I think I'm okay keeping it in hand for now. Doesn't seem like a matchup where we're gonna need to have all the mana in play to cast our spells, but rather we're gonna run out of spells eventually. Sadly, they've got an answer for Secret Keeper to pressure Ashok but we'll still get one activation out of it. So, start with Consider. Want to mill as much as possible before activating Ashok one last time, and another Drowned Secrets I'll keep. Now we've got two of these enchantments, which are difficult for Blue-Black to interact with. They are packing a few counter spells at least. And Secret Keeper is also quite synergistic with Drowned Secrets. Yeah, if they actually got to cast memory, that would have been a problem. Shuffling their uh, graveyard back, but luckily Ashok can exile it. This is difficult to and our opponent's down to 11 cards. 
And Secret Keeper will mill for four. We've got a Rivulet we can activate. And they're nowhere close to killing us. Cacophony could get the job done too here. Alright, let's pass a turn on the off chance that they have a shuffle effect so we can mill again with the Secret Keeper. And our opponent explodes, awesome. So yeah, we got to see our blue-black mill deck in action, reaching Mythic, and then continuing on to perform quite well in Mythic as well. So when should you play Turbo Mill? If control decks are popular, that's the main argument, as we're not really relying on creatures to do the milling for the most part. So just... Uh, Playing against a removal heavy deck is going to favor the mill strategy, as opposed to maybe a mill deck relying more on rogue synergies that play more creatures. There's also more controlling versions of mill you could play that have more removal and sweeper effects, but we're really just going for the turbo mill, which is uh, much more effective at dealing with opposing control decks as you don't end up with a bunch of dead removal spells in hand. Now, if the metagame is full of aggressive creature combo decks, then mill might be a little bit too slow and you might regret your choice. So there's definitely a lot of variants of this blue-black mill deck you could play, but for now, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.